Is Yuji still the main character of JJK? Don't get me wrong, Yuji is one of my favorite characters. He's funny, he has cool fights, and he's contributed to a lot of JJK's popularity. But as a manga reader, I can't help feeling like he's kind of been sidelined. Between the anime All About Gojo right now and the manga All About Gojo, it's kind of easy to forget that Yuji's even the main character. Naturally, it makes you wonder whether Yuji is really that good of a main character. Now, while I would argue he is, and I will explain why later in the video, you can't get there without addressing the obvious problems. The most obvious being that, for the most part, Yuji isn't really a driving force of the story. By that, I mean that Yuji is a mostly reactive character. Granted, there is no one definitive standard for a good protagonist, but one of the many common ways people talk about them is whether they're active or reactive. To illustrate what I mean, let's use one of the most common examples of this topic, especially considering it's often compared to and has many parallels to JJK. In Bleach, people used to label Ichigo as a bad protagonist because he is a reactive character. Whereas someone like Luffy goes out into the world and puts the events of the plot into action, Ichigo often finds himself at the receiving end of the plot. The plot happens to him rather than him actively driving the plot. Of course, people changed their perspective on this as the Thousand Year Blood War returned and it became cool to like Bleach again, but this was never a problem. Even when the plot happens to Ichigo, he still drives the plot. It is ultimately Ichigo's decisions and actions that drive the story of Bleach. Meanwhile, this isn't always the case in JJK. The story starts out with Yuji eating one of Sukuna's fingers, so in that sense it is ultimately a result of Yuji's actions. But for the most part, when you are reading JJK, it never really feels like Yuji is the one driving the plot. After the first arc, you have the next arc where Yuji's team is assigned missions to exercise cursed spirits. In both missions, Yuji is just doing what he's told. He has moments where his personality stands out like when he tries to save people, but he's not driving the plot, especially towards the end when he's just training and Gojo is doing all of the fighting, which is going to be a recurring theme, so just keep that in mind. We see things change for Yuji in the versus Mahito arc. This is one of Yuji's best arcs because it shows him going out of his way to help Junpei, and it's his actions that contribute to the tragic downfall of Junpei as well as the rise of Mahito as a villain. Then we have the Goodwill event. Not a bad arc for Yuji, but in this arc he's really just one of many players in this event. And of course, what happens when he gets one of the most important fights in this arc? He gets totally robbed by Gojo. And that's pretty much the trend when it comes to Yuji. He'll have the occasional arc where he really shines, but for the most part, his big opportunities are usually overshadowed by other characters. Which isn't a bad thing per se, as you can see with a character like Ichigo. But the difference here is that whereas Ichigo is ultimately the one who resolves the plot, Yuji rarely seems to be the one resolving anything. In fact, it's more often the case that someone else, especially Gojo, is doing that. At best, he's resolving the plot along with other characters characters who are just as important. Evidently, it's hard to say that Yuji is the driving force of the story. So then, if he's not the one driving the plot, one would wonder what else he could possibly offer as the main character. Thankfully, he makes up for this by offering one of the most important character arcs in the story. But before I explain why that is, make sure to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. It's the easiest way to support the channel, and it helps spread the video to other viewers like you. Now, I'm not going to say Yuji's arc is the single most important, because you could argue the same is true for Megami, Maki, or even Toji. But Yuji's is one of the most important because it is so representative of JJK. In the beginning, Yuji is given a very clear setup. Before his grandfather passes, he tells Yuji to help people. Before that, he wasn't really doing anything with his natural strength. He didn't have any desire to really use it, which is partly why he didn't want to play sports. So this changes when his grandfather passes and he's given the choice to join Jujutsu High. Suddenly, he's motivated to use his talent to help people. Now, of course, this motivation evolves as Yuji goes on missions and he's forced to overcome one traumatic event after another. One of the biggest ones being when he watches Junpei turn into a cursed spirit. He dies right in front of him and there's nothing Yuji can really do about it. This contributes to the evolution of Yuji as a character as he goes from seeing himself as a hero to doubting that perspective more and more. This reaches its peak in Shibuya, when Yuji and Mahito have their rematch. At this point, it should be clear that there will be spoilers going forward. Anyway, Yuji and Mahito have their rematch. And like usual, Yuji is forced to watch even more traumatic deaths. At one point, Mahito calls out Yuji for acting like a hero, claiming that humans and cursed spirits are no different. Then, as Yuji gains the advantage in the fight, he says that Mahito is right. He claims that he isn't a hero that fights with meaning. His role is simply to fight cursed spirits, plain and simple. 
which is illustrated in the next panel where their fight is parallel to a wolf hunting its prey. This is why Yuji's character arc is so representative of JJK. The sorcerers are not heroes. In fact, a lot of them are genuinely garbage people. The more you get into JJK, the more you see that the sorcerers are just the opposing force to curse spirits. They're more like cleaners than they are heroes. And nobody helps us to see that better than Yuji. So in that sense, he is an incredible main character. Even though he's not the most active character, he is the best example of JJK and what it's about. And yet, while Yuji is one of the most important characters to JJK in this regard, he still feels like one of its least important characters. Akutami has admitted that they made Gojo too strong, and while I disagree that this makes Gojo a bad character, you can't help but agree that JJK kinda turns into the Gojo show pretty quickly. Gojo is the one to fight Tsukuna when he takes over Yuji, but we'll give him that one. Gojo is the one to fight Jogo when Yuji is training. Funny enough, it's when Yuji finally gets involved that Jogo is able to slip away. When Gojo steps out of the plot, this is when Yuji is really able to shine as the main character. Then in Goodwill, Yuji gets a solid final fight, but that fight and arc are ultimately resolved by Gojo. Yuji shines somewhat in the next arc, is non-existent in Gojo's past. Then we get to Shibuya, the arc where the whole point is to seal Gojo. An arc where Yuji grows as a character, but he is one of many players. Ironically, Shibuya is a great point for Yuji as the main character because as soon as Gojo is taken out of the story, he's able to evolve as a character and take on more of the spotlight. In the arc following Shibuya, Yuji is forced to answer for his actions and has to work with the other characters to form a team that can win the Culling Games. Then in the Culling Games, Yuji is one of the many players, but there are moments where he continues to grow. And then Gojo shows up, and now all of this is gone, and JJK has become the Gojo show once again. As soon as Tsukuna switches over to Megami and Gojo returns, now the story is all about these two, and Yuji is just another character on the sidelines. We're in the middle of one of the most important fights in the story, and its main character is literally on the sidelines, just like, good luck man. It makes it hard to invest in anything Yuji is doing because you know that it's just going to get handed to Gojo. And it makes you wonder if there's even a place for him in the current story. Now, to that, I have two responses. First and foremost, it's obviously still early to be calling the end of JJK. This fight isn't over yet, so it's a bit early to claim that Gojo is resolving everything on his own. For all we know, Gojo is going to lose. In fact, all of the signs right now suggest that Gojo will lose in one way or another. So, there's the fact that Gojo won't be winning this as easily as he usually does. Meaning there will still be plot points left for Yuji to resolve following this fight. Secondly, even if this isn't the case, Yuji has still more or less fulfilled his role as the main character of JJK. Yuji is our gateway into the world of JJK. Not only does he represent the morally gray characters of this world, but he also allows us to project ourselves into it. He doesn't have the same lineage as the Zenin clan or the Satoru clan. He doesn't have any special abilities other than his raw power. At the end of the day, he's a regular meathead who has launched into this world against his will. So he functions as the perfect gateway into this world of Jujutsu sorcery. Is he the most important character? Not at all. But he's a great character with a lot of growth who, despite sharing the same stage as Gojo, serves his role as a solid main character. But maybe you disagree. Maybe you think Yuji is actually a bad main character. What do you think of his role in JJK? Share your thoughts and see what everyone else has to say down in the comments. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week on my community tab. And if you'd like another JJK discussion like this one, then make sure to check out my recent video on Gojo. In that video, I explain why Gojo is a fan favorite of JJK. You can find that video in the playlist linked right here. Until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.